so let's talk about this first bullet. We know students are coming to us with different needs. They're in my seventh grade science class, or in my eighth grade science class. What can I do differently? Well, the first thing is we have to stop trying to teach so much. Students don't learn more because we teach more stuff, more content. In fact, they probably retain and remember less in that next grade level. The more you, the more quantity of content you try to cover. You could call this teach less, learn more, or favoring uh, breadth, depth over breadth, or quality over quantity, or mastery over coverage, but whatever the case may be, the textbook isn't your curriculum. The Common Core standards aren't your curriculum. So you can go on IUSD.org, our website, and you can see our year out of glances, our, our one-page scopes and sequences for math. And here's what we don't cover in grade four, everything, or in grade seven, or in grade eight. Not as if it's equally important. So this is a really important concept, because if you want to attend to students' social, emotional, or behavioral needs, if you want to give them more time and alternative support so that they learn at high levels, how are you going to do that by teaching everything you are right now? Who has extra time? So we don't. So we, oh, somebody did. I'm sorry. There was somebody who has some extra time. All right, so with tier one, we're talking tier one here. These are our three terms. Chris said it's not about the three letters. It's it's just about these sensible, common sense words. We prepare to differentiate. So talk to your feeder schools. Who do you got coming to? You could know that. And I'm not asking all of y'all to do it. That's an administrative task. But then you all have to act on it and be willing to say, yep, yeah, I'm not going to pretend like these are a blank slate worth of kids coming to me. I'm not going to have amnesia. No, I'm going to... I'm going to actually know my kids. I'm not going to prejudge them. I'm going to prepare for them. Right? So we have to do that. That's being proactive. We've got to be targeted. I already said it. Teach less, learn more, for goodness sake. Um, science, for example, earlier, um, I, there's still science teachers in our district saying, but Chris, the NGSS, it's new. you got to teach it all. How's that working for you? Like, it's not about teaching at all. It's about students learning. What's most critical for them to learn? And if it can't be everything, then what is it going to be? Focusing on that. And then we have common units of study, a classic sort of element of PLCs, and we have common assessments. Not so administrators in the district <laughs> office, the director of data and PLCs at the district office. He's right in the room, so I just want to take five minutes. <laughs> Not so he can like keep his thumb on you and, and, and watch over you like a hawk. We do it because you can't collaborate if you don't have a common unit of study within which our priorities we want all students to learn. You can't collaboratively prepare for differentiated supports for kids if you don't have something common for which you're preparing them. Never, ever a day-by-day -day rigid curriculum. Never, ever, and I hope ever. But certainly, look, in this next month, these are the real critical things to do. And here's some common ways that we're going to measure evidence of those things. Not everything. Don't do that to yourself. Just those really important things. Commonly assess them so we have a common target, so we can commonly and accurately measure or identify those things we need more. Here's a misconception that tier three support should take the place of tier one for those really low kids. And we've tried that. Read 180 groups. You don't, you're not in English, you're in Read 180. And Read 180 themselves said, oops. Because kids made gains. They made gains in that 20 student group that was highly structured with a ton of support. Then they went back to English 8 without any of it. And they didn't do something right? And not to mention that they weren't getting that same content based, standards based, three level standards based experience that they're getting here. So I know it's difficult because the schedule is the schedule and the beginning and the end of school is the beginning of school. But the ideal is that we're trying to provide them scaffold and differentiated access to tier one and the tier three schools. <laughs> yeah, why are you not here? Yeah, me too. Love That's him. him. Love him. I know. So he, why do you love him? <laughs> because when I was 35 years of age, I went into this profession. And I, and I uh, found out about Bloom, I said, Eureka, why didn't I notice when I was in the grade? And that's a God's truth. Me too. So Bloom is a really famous dude. Absolutely. In the 1950s, he should be. He should be more famous. Yes, in the be. 1950s, he invented this taxonomy, mm -hmm. which is a game changer. Are you laughing at the picture? Not it looks like you. <laughs> I look like him. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's the best compliment I've ever received. I mean, in a few years, when I have a little regret. What do you think, George? Yeah, smile. In the 50s, that's approximately 70 years ago now, almost, he invented the taxonomy of learning. But here's what people don't know, and who cares? It's, you might think it's just trivia, but it matters. In the 1960s, he invented RTI. RTI isn't new. It wasn't invented by Mike or me or Austin or Kurt, but Mike Matos, different Mike. It was invented by Bloom in the 1960s. He proved it. He studied it. It didn't begin in elementary schools. It began in high schools, just like PLCs did, interestingly. And this quote is, is a real important one, y'all, because I fear that one of the reasons why we have normal distributions of grades is not because kids couldn't get it. It's because we didn't give them time or the right support to get it. And you're thinking, yeah, we've got to move on. Do we? Well, what if we didn't just move on? So Bloom invented it. Chris didn't. He invented it. He invented tier two. And so here's an important thing. Tier two supports aren't provided by an interventionist. Tier two is more time to master the priorities of tier one. So who should take the lead on that? PLC teams. PLC teams should take the lead on that. 